This week's episode is sponsored by Lemon Creative Media. From graphic designs to multimedia and logo design, these lads have got over 50 years experience in print media. For all your quality prints, flyers, brochures and stationery, they also do animation, illustration, video promotions, signage and banner stands. You'll find loads of their work on Instagram. Give them a follow, Lemon Creative Media. Thanks. Welcome to the Billy Moore podcast, and today's special guest is mm-hmm. none other than a former guest of mine, Danny Christie. No jibbies around here, much. Yeah. And we've got new to the game, Adam, who's a good friend of Danny's. And good this is you. look, this is Danny. This is Adam's first time on camera, so yeah. please yeah. be gentle yeah. with yeah. the comments. He's quite yeah. nervous, but I tell you something: if you you were standing in front of him, you know you'd be quite intimidated. So, yeah. Danny. Thanks for coming back on, mate, and uh, we just, we just, thanks for inviting me to your house, Alan, up in Carlisle, we've had a good day today. So, yeah, what's been going on for you since we've last spoke? Well, <coughs> recovery, Bill. Uh, Which is good news, yeah, yeah. It is, I've got, uh, I've got Adam to thank for that. Um, we've married Adam's and sister for 10 years, and she is, we've been like a brother to us, really, Adam, we've, we've been close, we've been tight, uh, more than tight, you know, we've been close, really close over the years, and... Yeah, you know, I noticed a big change in him. The last time I seen him, a big, big change. Um, you know, and he's not only his behaviour but his mindset. And um, you know, I was like, what, what's going on with him? I mean, he rose up and he was talking about, started talking about high power. I mean, I've I have, I've had this conversation with a few people, and I never ever thought I would have had this this com- the conversation about higher power. You know, I know that was amazing stuff that we talked about on the phone before we, you know, before the current sentence spoke about it, but I just could not believe what I was hearing. I literally could not believe what I was hearing. I was on the phone and I, my chin hit the couch. I was like, wow. Some of the stuff he mentioned and some of the stuff that I've thought about in my head for years. And I never quite verbalised it. I've spoke briefly about it to other people that I'm close to and that. But I, like I said, I couldn't actually believe what he was coming out with. And I was like, wow. And I thought like... This stuff's just been sort of hidden in my head for ages without being expressed fully. And I said, what? He says, he's gone to this fellowship. You know, NA fellowship. No, no. I mean, I had, in my head, I had, you know, anger management with Jack Nicholson. Yeah. <laughs> and Adam Sandler. That's what I had in my head. That's, what, that's kind of what I had in my head, like a chaotic, mad group. And Adam invited us down. And, 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 and I'm, But I wanted to go down. I was ready to stop using drugs. I had a problem with you know, benzos, weed, you know, the white stuff. <clears throat> had a problem with it, you know, for years on and off. And I've said this before many times, I never recognised it as a problem, you know, and you don't really until it's too late. Yeah. I was fucked up. I was in this, like, horrible circle of taking books, couldn't get out of it. And I honestly just thought I wanted a break from it. I'm not a break from it, I wanted to stop it completely, but I wanted a break from my own mindset. I wanted a break from, you know, what I was going through. And me and I felt like I was trapped in this relentless, like, like a loop, like a cognitive loop as well, thinking the same stuff, wanting to change, but then going back. And it was like a constant cycle of doing that. And I just looked around and I, I just noticed this change. Yeah. I noticed a massive, massive change. You know, everything, personality, concept, outlook, behaviour. It was even speaking differently. You know, I was always been a wise lad, but, you know, just wisdom. Eh? I was and I was saying the right things at the right time. And I thought, I'm going out with this fellowship. And uh, it's definitely the best thing I've ever done. You know, we've seen it before, this this is the best session <laughs> I've ever been on in my life. The best session I've ever been on, you know, and I, I owe a lot to Adam for that. And, uh, you know, I can't thank him enough for that. Please, and that's, thanks, thanks, Adam, for that. To be, to be honest, I, never, I wasn't even aware that you had, like, you know, I, had, I knew you had a history of using drugs, cannabis and stuff, but I wasn't aware that you had a problem to a point where you needed some kind of intervention. And I'm glad that when we spoke after our podcast, you would tell me about you were going to this fellowship and... You know, I, I've been gone for years. There's no way. I'm, I've, I've been involved in recovery for a long, long time. I'm almost five years clean. I'm so grateful that Danny's sitting here and he and Adam, and they're both. That, Adam's a couple of months now, aren't you? Now, Adam's got a mad, mad story. And um, I don't know whether you want to share any of it, but I, I, I'd like him to. I suppose it's up to you. So tell us a little bit about. Adam's been arrested for a couple of. Naughty things. Naughty things. So do you want to tell us? Right. Well, yeah, speak up because we're, we're on the... Well, ever since I was young, just got involved in fighting and just... Never never really boxed, but 
fighting in the streets, but it always came to me, I was always attracted to the trouble and been arrested and I'd fight some people and people, someone's died and I got arrested for a murder, but it wasn't my fault. I got away with it for self-defense. Uh, but every, every time then, like trouble, trouble, trouble for years. I just didn't know what to do with it. And then, so then after the trouble, got in, the drugs came and then the rest of the blur, really. Hmm. Yeah, that's all good. Yeah, no, but that was enough because yeah. it was quite difficult. It's quite difficult for Adam to actually, he's not shy, but it is nerve wracking to sit in front of a camera. Don't care who you are, it's been a long time for me to actually get to a point where I can communicate and so I not feel like a prick sitting here. You know, because how many times it, it's quite difficult, isn't it? Absolutely, I can relate to that myself. Big time, big, big time. I mean, look at me when I first started making videos, look at the dick of that here. Look at some of the stuff that I used to project on him because that's all I knew. Yeah. I couldn't sit here like this and calmly talk about anything. You see my videos at first, I'm ripping tops off, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll fight anyone, anyone. I'll disagree with anyone, where do you live? You know, it's, the, it's an anxiety thing with me, I just think, oh, what do I look like on the video, what do I think? Mm -hmm. I just uh, start stuttering. I just shoot right into the end and go, fuck that, it looks like a medicine ball. <laughs> that would be the first thing I do. It's, it's all vanity, because yeah. we want to look good, we want to shine good. We want to. And this is, there's no edits on this, by the way. We're not cutting this, chopping that, we're just doing this on my phone, in Adam's kitchen. And we've just done a full hour and 10 minutes podcast yeah. with Danny on Danny's phone without an edit. Yeah. And that was a struggle, let me tell you. Yeah. So, yeah, so you're, you've been a couple of months now involved in Yeah, yeah. I just what I do is I push things to the extreme. When I take coke, I, I take a lot of it, go missing for days, and I just really destroy my family. And I just had enough of torturing them. I mean, what is that? I know with, with people, I, I think. I'll, I'll help them. So you see lost souls like me, I think I'll help them. I'll, I'll try and get them. Instead of thinking, I'll look after myself. And if it really, the people are, I bomb my own family off to, to go and help Divis. And I just thought, I'd had enough. I'd had enough. And uh, I heard uh, Paul Venice talking about any It's the only thing that ever helped him, right? Yeah. Mm. It's the only thing that's ever helped him on a. Uh... So I thought, I'm going to this in did you hear him talk about that on a on Yeah, yeah, I heard him, him on, on, his, uh, on his vlogs. I just saw him say the only thing I ever helped him was then there. Uh, and I thought, I'm, 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 I'm going to finish this. I'm going to go there. So I walked through the door. <laughs> and, uh, I used this lad that I used to hang around with, right? Yeah. He'd been missing for six years. <laughs> right? And another lad that I know, like James, he, he's like, he, he's, uh, James says, I've always hoped, I've always prayed you'd come through these doors, Adam. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, fuck you know, what have I walked into here? Yeah. I thought, how the fuck are these supposed to help me? <laughs> and, uh, I just felt comfortable after it. I just like I thought, this is gonna work. This. And ever then, uh, I just was couldn't wait to get back. And, uh, and ever since then, it's just been NA. Seems right. all I need to think about NA. Right. Instead of taking off on the drugs, I take off, uh, take off to NA all, right. all the time. <laughs> yeah, and, and like like recovery in that that recovery pathway is different for everyone. Like I'll, I'll always say this: I've worked in like the field of uh, addiction for a number of years and I wouldn't allow my my experience to cloud my judgment when it comes to someone else's pathway in recovery. But for me, I'm grateful that Danny has found his own foot in the in recovery and also Adam has and, and thanks to Paul for, for sharing his story because without Paul sharing his story <coughs> you wouldn't have found yeah. that path. So you know we're all trying to, we're in the business of kind of saving lives, not only our lives but other people's lives. And for me, it was, um, I remember exactly the same experience. But I walked through uh, the doors of a meeting and I seen this guy and I thought, fucking hell, I used to, you know, I used to graph with him. You know, how the fuck is he supposed to help me out, my brother? And, and he was talking in a different language. So I'm a procrastination and unmanageability and powers and, and higher powers, my thoughts, he's rather bending. So, so I, actually, I actually went up to him and said to him, have you fucking enjoyed the culture show, mm -hmm. See, I hear uh, Paul Benny's going on these sayings like one is too many in a thousand is never mm -hmm. enough, and like all the ones like that. Uh, I can only give, I can only keep what I've got by giving it away. And I walked in there, and uh, they were saying the same things, but the the look on the face is now fresh to where I thought I want what they've got. Mm -hmm. I will, I will, they changed so much. Do you know what I mean? It's, instead of them being selfish, they were just thinking about me, and uh, that's all I wanted. I wanted to be where they were with no problems, dead calm. It's like a peace. They've got like a peace, the ones that's right into it, they've got like, it's instead of a hectic uh, carnage mm -hmm. that they've got, they've got peace, and that's what I wanted. Yeah. A lifetime of fighting and I've had enough. I just didn't want the wars no more, I didn't want the fights no more, I didn't want the trouble, I didn't want the carnage coming back home after six days, we're not, in pieces, destroyed. 
I don't think enough. Yeah. Do you know what? If you if you sat and listened to Aaron, which I did before we done this little interview, I mean this kid has had some hell of a fucking journey in especially fighting. There's been the every, every second fucking thing that come out of his mouth. There's a battle there. <laughs> I, I remember I fight with him and I <laughs> fight with him and, and he and that Reggie there and I fucking guys there. No did he see emotion? I punched him here. I fucking yeah. punched him there. And he, I'm like, wow, he's going to end up throwing a dig at me. I'm going to be on the fucking list here. The big ball came down and I fucking banged him. I don't know why. He just looked at me and I fully and I thought, fucking bang him. This is the twist and wired thinking that I've got. I'm thinking, I'm fucking happy to hold with this kid. But do you know what? It's, it's you know, we've had something too easy. We've, we've had a little walk around. Uh, Carlisle, it's been really great. I've enjoyed the, 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 the day, you know, um, and it's just been nice meeting yeah. yourself and catching up with Danny. And, you know, Danny, going forward, what are you going to do? What's what's your plans? Um, you know, I want to, said this before, Billy, you know, I still, I still think, I still feel internally, you know, that I've got a, a purpose, a really good purpose, and I'm certain, you know, I know without uncertainty, it's going to involve helping people. You know, and I can't help but think it's going to be on this path that I'm on. It's going to be to do with, you know, recovery, faith, um, forgiveness, higher power, training. Uh, it's going to be something to do with them type of things. And I'm certain it's going to be something to do with them. You know, I just am. And especially the more and more deeper I get into this faith. I mean, I read the Bible twice a day for my own reasons. I get a lot from it. Um, I pray twice a day. Um, you know, I can't help but draw so much from this new path that I'm on. And I just keep saying this repeatedly, but you know, what do you do when something feels good? What do you do when something feels good? You always go back. And that doesn't matter what it is. That doesn't matter if it's muggy, if it's drugs, if it's a situation or a feeling or a person or a conversation. If something feels good, you're always going to go back. And nothing for me has ever felt so good, so deeply rewarding. You know, so nothing's ever struck a chord like this recovery and this fellowship. You know what, Danny, you remind me so much of myself and the fact that, like, you know, fighting was like an escape. Like, getting in the ring, boxing, uh, scrap and violence, it was it was an escape mechanism for me. It was how I coped, because I couldn't live outside of that ring like normal people. You know, I could get in and I could take an iron and I was used to it. You know, that's, where I, that's what I was drawn to, that kind of life. Now that's not what you want to do, is it? You just want to crack on and you just want to help others and take care of your family and you know be a productive member of society mm -hmm. and, and most of all what I'm hearing is that you just want that that cannabis. Yeah, I do I mean Fuck all this bollocks, all this toxic yeah. platform shit where people are starting yeah. to fucking strangle each other down, you know, people yeah. well, that's where I was. That's where I was eighteen months ago, that's where I was two years ago. You know, just chomping at the bit for trouble, you know, chomping at the bit for trouble. Not even not really projecting it and putting it out there like do but you know, secretly inside, just kind of ready, just like a bomb, constantly waiting to go off. Nobody got a second chance. You know, the amount of times I've dropped my belt and jumped off a scaffold and wanted to tear into like sight agents, not just for saying the wrong thing, or just for pissing us off. But I'm in my head, I'm thinking, he thinks I'm a divvy. He's talking to us like a divvy, thinks I'm a divvy. Never for one minute considered that, you know, this person might deserve a second chance. This person might have just bit for us for one of a million reasons. You know, he's maybe, he's maybe he's anything. He's maybe he's lost a loved one. You know, someone's maybe happened to his bairn or somebody's got a bad household, he's got a toxic stuff going on in his own life. None of that, there was no empathy at all towards anybody. Yeah. No, you know, now it's nice to, to feel and to think and to, to be just to, to react in a different way. You know what I mean? I do still get, you know, thoughts, violent thoughts. I do still, you know, I'm only human. But, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't, no, I did want that. I did always want that. And I did, that bomb that was always waiting to go off. Now I'm trying to defuse. Instead of me just waiting to, for someone to pull the trigger on this grenade and for it to just go boom, and me to be feeling that's where I need to be, top off, strip to the waist, let's go. I don't. That's now. It's nothing like that anymore. I don't think like that anymore. This bomb that's maybe still inside internally could well still be there. Now I'm trying to defuse it. Now I don't want it to go off. Now I'm doing everything in my power psychologically and mentally, not for it to go off, to try and calm it, to try and cool it, and to try and water the flames. You know what I mean? Well, we all know that you've got nothing to prove, right? So there's no need to, to be going down that road again. Like Aaron, you've got nothing to prove, mate. The only thing that's going to come out of this is, is, is a lot of consequences, a lot yeah. of sadness. Now, I feel that you both, well, we're all, I'll say both, we're all three of us, like, we can all fucking have a scrap. 
right? Yeah. That's what we're going for. We can have a mm -hmm. scrap, right? So why not put something and be of a benefit to the society and community today? Yes. Like that's what I made it with you anyway. You know what I mean? Do some, some change. So that's that's all I want to do. I use I always just try and help the don't like easy a lot of like sit there and think I want to help him, want to pull him on the street and now when I've needed to help myself. Do you know what I mean? I was trying to help the wrong people. They always try to stab you in the back after mm -hmm. you think you're soft because you help. All right, so I mate, I remember when I first got clean, right? And it was all about me. We only keep what we are by giving it away. Right? It was on benefits, and I was buying everyone a fucking steak. All these newcomers mm -hmm. come to my house, fucking spend all your money on you. Mm -hmm. Come on, mm -hmm. I'll give you this, I'll give you that. And I ended up with fuck all of them. We're back out there, mm -hmm. it's back in the grip, back using, and I'll do it again and again. And then, um, you know, you know, we can become a rebel without a cause and, and, and help other people without helping ourselves. Mm -hmm. Without helping yourself, you're not going to be in a position to help anyone. Yeah. No, there's a, there's a, there's a saying, right? We can, we'll love you, and this is what you come into a media. We'll love you till you can love yourself. Now I don't fucking love myself. Mm -hmm. You know I didn't love myself. I didn't care about myself. You know, and I need the people out there in the same mindset as me to fucking sort of guide me and nurture me. And you've got that, you know, you've got that. This is a bit of, a bit of topic with what we're doing here and I need to be different than the norm, it? It feels good, eh? It feels it good does. to discuss these things and I just want to touch a little bit there on what you said before, I don't like, if we're helping people, I've always had that inside me and I know you have, I know, I know your heart's always like with stuff, I'm, I'm certain of it, but I think, you know, a lot of time, like, I've, I mean, I've got the same opinion here, I mean, I couldn't, I never in my life ever, ever watch somebody getting bullied. Oh, that's what I hate. I could never do it, but see, see that's how my all my fights have started. I've started and I've seen someone throw, whoa, 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 exactly. get out the way, and then they start with you, and then you'd have exactly. to knock the play out, wouldn't you? Look, that's, this is what I'm, that's exactly what I'm, that's exactly what I'm referring to. All my fights have started sticking up helping people. But like, listen, I've done, listen, I mean, how many times have I seen you do that, turning to someone that's just, just for sticking up for someone that didn't deserve shit? I've mm. done it myself, mm. but like, now, to be, not, not helping people through, you know, through learning someone out, now there's other ways, you know, you, 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 come so, be, you become, you become well, familiar with these other ways of helping people without being physically violent towards anyone. You know, there's other ways of doing what we've always done, but there's a more, there's a better approach to it out now, as you know. Yeah. Mm. And if that feels good, how can I not worry when something feels good? You know what, 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 what I, you know, what I feel like, there's a lot of platforms out there that you've got your own platform now. And if you want to subscribe to it, it's Danny Christie. The real Danny Christie. Christie. The real yeah. Danny Christie. Need to be round here. Nice, right, and this is the real All or Nothing podcast. Need to be yeah. round here. V. <laughs> D. V. D. No go there. Right. D. That's the truth. That's right. how it is. I'm not competing with anyone. However, moving forward, yeah, if there's people out there that are struggling, that want to get in, with, in, in contact with Danny or Adam, pretty sure Adam's got some. I mean, you need to fucking help yourself before you start helping. <laughs> 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 but if you want to jump on his ear and leave my fucking yeah. ear alone, please yeah. do. If you want to chew on Danny's, you're welcome. I'm going to put all Danny's information within the description. And, you know, you off any kind of social media, Instagram and Facebook. Well, I'll put, I'll put Aaron's uh, links in, in as well. So we'll get that sorted. And anyone wants to ask any questions, and if it's there to, you know, in a position, there's a lot of people out there that are struggling. Now, all I'd say to someone out there who's struggling, because I got a message last night of this kid on Twitter, he was sending me a DM, Bill, I watch all your podcasts, so thanks mate, um, I'm not going to mention your name, he said, but I'm struggling with addiction, with the coke, you know, any suggestions, any guides, the only thing I can do, right, I'll tell you this, and this is for anyone, all I did was, was reach out and, and go to a fellowship, that was for me, some people do smart recovery, some people go and do religion, some people just fucking share will it, Others need fucking locking away in prisons. Others need rehabilitation for a long, long time. I've got a, a group of friends that I trust, that I can relate to, I can identify with, and they help me. And this is the same path that Danny and um, Adam's on. So if that's for you, that's for you, you're welcome. There's, there's a website, you know, you can follow, it's called the NA website. Uh, yeah, what would you suggest to anyone, Dan? <clears throat> um. I was, I was like a lot of people I was using for a long time, thinking it wasn't a problem and I, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for the fellowship. I didn't want the fellowship. I would have dismissed it as, you know, a waffle or whatever, or a lot of wretches. I know I know I would have. It's like anything else, you've got to be ready. You have to be at that point of sick when you have to want, you have to have the desire to stop taking drugs. And that's what it's all about. You get down there, everybody wants the same thing. 
everybody wants the same thing. So um, the camaraderie, did they? When we get down there, and I say, well, like a load of mates, when you go into, it's like, like, like going to the pub or something. Like a brother. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we go to the coffee shop, <laughs> 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 it's mint. It's proper mint. I, uh, anyone that is ready for that, is ready for the change and thinks, you know, they can't do it on their own or they're sick of, you know, pacing the house or isolating themselves with drugs and you get, you get to that point where you are sick, you don't want it no more. That's where I was, I didn't want it no more. And I know I'm in the right place and I'm certain I can't do it without the fellowship. There's no way I can do this on my own. I need the fellowship and I would advise anybody that was in my position or worse or deeper or, you know, using, the, the, the amount doesn't matter. It's where, where you're taken, where you're taken by the drug and where you're taken by your drug use can just consume you to the point where you, you, the last thing you want to do anymore is take drugs. Drugs stop making me feel good for years. I just fail to recognise it. And like I've said, this recovery is the best session I've ever been on. Hands down, by far, it's amazing. It really is. Anything you'd like to share before we finish, Adam? No, no, just like... Um, but thank you for coming on. Thanks, thanks. thanks for sharing thanks for your stories. We'll leave it there. Thanks a lot.